How, how did you begin to find your way into this technology area? What, what was it that first turned you on? Well, the family wouldn't have it any other way. So uh, my uncle was an inventor, my father was an engineer, and uh, I invented an automatic ship steering gear at the age of 14, <coughs> which went into, I guess, 20 patents or something like that. And ended up taking me uh, from London to uh, Australia and back. So that wasn't too bad. <laughs> that was a long trip in those Gave days. me experience in electronics and uh, how not to get seasick on a big ship and uh, how to deal with the captain. So it was good experience. Well, what can I say? Uh, exponential growth or more in the field of biomedical optics. I've been so proud to see that uh, the few seeds that we laid uh, have sprouted in so many ways and so many labs are interested. I think they're interested because you can develop the analytical guy, well, he can write an equation and the experimental guy can figure out a new optical path or optical system uh, in a very unique way. And that's furthermore, the industry can get into it at the high end or the low end or the medium end. In other words, there are little gadgets for, well, I think that um, Jack Pesach and Bill Blumberg uh, invented a bilirubinometer in the 1940s or 1950s. And uh, so there's little simple things you can make. And of course, believe it or not, the glucosometer, which you hold in your hand if you're slightly diabetic, mm -hmm. is based upon the reaction that I studied in 1938. In other words, it, it's an enzyme reacts with glucose makes hydrogen peroxide and this enzyme that I studied takes hydrogen peroxide and makes a, a colorless dye into a colored dye and little spectrophotometer measures it. So, Monitors that, yes. Yeah, so it's very satisfying that all of these things seem to have a long lifetime. <laughs> they reappear. Maybe that's immortality or something. <laughs> so I, I think the field is going ahead and I think that uh, very soon companies like uh, ART and IDF and so forth uh, will bring to the market breast cancer imagers which we've been studying ourselves and brain function detectors and uh, muscle function detectors and uh, certainly do diagnostics for cancer with molecular beacons coming down the pipeline. So it's a, it's a pretty busy field. What, what, what advice would you have for students going into science and engineering uh, schools and looking at that as their, their careers? Well, I'm living that out. Uh, we have uh, almost 10 graduate students. And uh, I give them hell. <laughs> 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 no, I emphasize to them that they have to uh, be multidisciplinary. They have to know some chemistry, some physics, some electronics, some optics, uh, some cancer, some, uh, you know, uh, peripheral vascular disease, whatever, um, and that diabetes is a consequence. And uh, so um, I, it makes it difficult to teach because you can't just say, well, you take this course in physics and that'll tell you all you need to know. Or you can take this course in biology and that'll tell you all you need to know. It's the interleaving of all these techniques to make a better mousetrap and a better cancer detector, a better diabetes detector. So it's, it's quite an exciting ball game because there, didactically there isn't a good textbook. I, it's a good thing there isn't because the field's changing all the time. So, um, yes, it's, uh, it's the uh, cutting edge that has to be sharpened but by students' wits. How about that? <laughs>